Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. One of the things in nature that I will never tire of are beautiful sunsets. And today I'm going to show you, using a number of different supplies, how to do a very basic sunset. So you'll see there I'm going to use some cardstock, just a basic cardstock. I've cut these to three and a half by two and a half, which is artist trading card size. And I've cut another set to three inches by five inches. Although in the time available, I actually only use one of those. So what I'm going to do are some sunset and silhouette type cards using, as I say, a variety of supplies, but basically a similar technique with them all. So I'm going to speed this up because I was working quite slowly as usual. And this first one that I'm going to do is with gelatos. So I'm actually going to use an old baby wipe that was dried out a long time ago and I've just wet that with some water and I'm going to use that to help blend these out. So I've taken this raspberry colour, I've put a little bit at the bottom and some at the top. Then I'm using watermelon and I'm just running it over the card, not too thick at this stage. That one is peach. This one is butterscotch. I'd meant to have that directly above the raspberry, but it doesn't matter. So using a bit more peach. And then this one is snow cone. And I'm going to take my baby wipe and I'm just going to start to blend these together. Now, because this is cardstock, using this sort of technique, even if you used a dry cloth, the cardstock can start to kind of bobble and just pull a little bit. It's just the way the paper goes, that doesn't matter. If you used watercolour, you wouldn't get that effect unless you rubbed really hard. And I should say, when I am rubbing over with the baby wipe, I'm not doing it too hard. I'm just going back in with some more colour bit more just adding it on there and again I'll take my baby, uh, baby wipe and I'm just going to blend it out a bit again not too hard but what I'm trying to do is to get the colours to kind of blend into each other almost the kind of ombre type effect. Now if you're using paper like this and it does start to pill just take something like a soft dry brush and just brush it off and it'll just lift those little bits of paper out the way. So that is as simple as that using gelatos. Now I'm going to do something very similar but this time using Neocolor 2s and again I'll be blending them in a similar way. Now I'm going to use a white on the bottom of this. You obviously can't see it at this stage. I'm then going to use yellow this one is orange, then vermilion, then scarlet, bit of purple, ultramarine, cobalt blue and turquoise. Now you can basically create the effect with three colours. You don't need all of those. But I thought why not? So again using a similar technique, just taking a bit of the old baby wipe that has been soaked in some water and just starting to spread those out. Now likewise the paper is likely to pill with this effect but again I'll brush it off. And if you want to brighten some of the colours you can just go back in and just add a bit in. You can blend it further or you can leave it. Really just whatever way you think. But you see that by adding the bit of white at the bottom the yellow has blended in a little and it's not pure white there. If you want to give it a, a little bit of a different effect, add one of the darker colours on the lighter point and it just gives that little notion of clouds. Something that you'll often see in a sunset where some of the more vivid deep reds are actually highlighted in the areas that are a little bit yellow for example. So now I'm going to do some watercolours. And you, you see I had uh, worked on some earlier just to, to try these out. 
So this set of watercolours, I think it's by Artist Loft. I actually got these in Hobbycraft. I think at the time they were about £5, but I think they're more expensive now. I've had them a, a few years. Now I think the watercolour gives a really nice effect. And all I've done is to spray the watercolours just to get them started a little bit. And I'm putting this on quite thick so my brush wasn't too wet. So I'm just taking a kind of one of the deeper colours of yellow there, going in and getting a bit of the orange. Again, keeping it quite thick at this stage, not too watery. And finally, that kind of deep orange going on to a red. I've obviously used it a lot in the past because it's uh, well worn down by the looks of it. Just added a little bit of water to my brush and now all I'm doing is going back and forward across the card just to blend it in. And again, if you want to add in a few highlights of the other colours, just dip your brush in and then spread it out. A very easy effect. Now sometimes with sunsets you will still see some of the blue sky. So, you know, it's nice to add in the blue as well. And again, you can do that with watercolour. Quite a bright blue there. And of course, with watercolour, that can be easily taken back. Just going for that kind of ready orange there, another orange, and then I think I add a, a little bit of the yellow. I've made them a little bit thinner this time, but you'll see just the same blending effect. And because I blend up and into the blue, it knocks back that bright blue colour just a little bit. But if you like bright colours, just leave it a little. So, I mean, I think one of the good things about this is it doesn't really matter what supplies you have, you can use them. This one is acrylic. And again, two cards beforehand. One I used with canary yellow, cad orange hue, and a red, and the other one I used a canary yellow, the card orange hue, and fuchsia. And the one I'm going to demonstrate here is with the fuchsia. Now, the canary yellow is an artiste, I think, by Do Crafts. The cad orange hue is Windsor Newton. I didn't have a kind of orange in the craft type paints, although I, I could have mixed it, I guess. And the fuchsia is actually by Hobbycraft. I'm laying these ones just out on a piece of uh, palette paper, simply because when I was doing the the kind of practice ones, I don't know, the cad orange hue for some reason was leaving a little bit of a mark where I put the blob on, so I thought I'll just do it with the palette. So again, a very similar technique. I'm starting at the top with the yellow bring it down into the orange, wiping off the excess, don't need a lot of acrylic for this, and then that fuchsia colour. But you could use a magenta or anything. You could even use primary colours such as blue and red and the yellow, and just mix down with some whites if you wanted to, to lighten them. Again, adding some little bits here and there, just for effect, brushing it out. And you can see that you can create different effects. This card has a bit of a life of its own, it wants to go all over the place. It's saying I'm finished, and I'm saying you're not, I'm doing a bit more. And that's that. Each card you do will turn out ever so slightly different, and that's part of the fun of it. So this final card, I'm actually using some of my favourite paints, and they're the PBO High Viscosity Iridescent. I really like these paints, they give a nice effect. They are a bit more expensive than craft paints, but I have tended to buy these when they've been on offer in Hobbycraft. And they actually work out, you'll, you'll hear me saying this time and time again in, in some of my videos, that they actually end up working out cheaper than some of the craft paints. I like craft paints, but if you want something just a little bit different, then watch out for the likes of these coming on offer 
in the UK here in Hobbycraft in particular. So the colours I've used are blue-green, violet-blue, red-blue and orange-yellow. Now if you do the similar blending effect, the colours will change a little bit. They won't be quite as vibrant as when you put them first on, but of course you can add more to the top. If you do want them more vibrant, then what I would suggest is you put one colour on at a time and just let it dry a little bit. So when it comes to blending, you're not blending them fully in together. And just go to the join line and just blend the join line in. What you can't see in this sort of light is, is the fact that they are nice and bright. They are, they are iridescent, of course. The light kind of bounces off them, which I like. Just adding a few highlights there, just to give the effect of the clouds. The blue changes colour because the paint's still underneath, underneath still that little bit wet. But that just gives a slightly different effect. And of course, the exact same can be done on the larger size cards. So the next phase of creating these cards, I'm going to take various clear stamps and I'm just going to stamp onto them. So I have an acrylic block there. I'm just showing you there that, that you could have either side up or down. You could have the blue at the top, so the orange and pinks are blending into your blue, or you could start with the blue and it then blends into your oranges, reds, pinks, whatever. So this is a clear stamp by Hobbycraft. I've had it for years. They call it thistle. It's not actually a thistle as I know it, but that's the name it goes under if you happen to be looking for it. And of course, I'm just using some black stays on ink. I'm just going to stamp these off to begin with. I've got them in that little tray at the side because I did actually wash these. A lot of these stamps I use with acrylic paint and if they're not washed right away, the acrylic paint dries into them and you can use the effect. So I soaked them for a while in a little bit of soapy water and then really basically scraped and picked out as much of the acrylic paint as I could. So this is the gelato card that I'm stamping onto. And I've got a nice crisp print there. Just printed that one over to the side a little bit. This one is the Neo Colour 2s. And again, I'm just going to use the same stamp here, just trying to show you the different effects of doing this, rubbing off a little bit of the pill from earlier. Now, of course, you don't always have to stamp in the exact same way. Here I'm going to do the stamp a second time and it just gives a slightly different effect from the first. So, you know, even though you don't have a lot of stamps, you can just use them in different ways to get different effects. And if you don't have stamps like this, don't worry because in a minute I'll show you how just to do how to do just a basic painted finish. Again, this is one of my favorites from Hobbycraft. I don't have the little label for it, but it, it, it's just a bird, basically. Got a bit of, bit of detail on it, and I have used this hundreds of times, probably. So taking one of my... I can't remember, that could have been... A, I think that's a watercolour card I'm using that time. And just stamping onto that, and this time I'm doing one of the acrylic cards. So really just showing here that they all stamp pretty much the same. And there we go. So just doing that silhouette effect against the sunset background, I think, is, is really quite effective. Here's a tree this time, again, Hobbycraft. I have a few of these small stamps. They are... Price-wise, they're about the cheapest, I think, you can buy, certainly, in the UK. And uh, 
I think they're good for artist trading cards and that type of thing. Now, if you're new to mixed media, and I do get people asking this, what's an artist trading card? Basically, it's a card that's two and a half inches by three and a half inches, and artists, crafters, swap them. So the nice little cards, you can also give them in happy mail. And again, sometimes people say, what's happy mail? It's just a piece of mail that you would send to a friend uh, just to make them happy. You know, there's nothing quite like receiving happy mail. This stamp, this is a bigger stamp this time, so I'm going to use one of my bigger cards. This actually came with a magazine. It was a set of stamps. It's just called a Fairy Collection. I couldn't see a maker's name on the pack. It's a little bit different. I think it's quite nice and I think it goes particularly well with the sunset background. You see with this one I've turned the card so that the darker colours, the deeper colours are to the bottom with the yellow at the top. And I'm going to try and, and centre this stamp. It doesn't help that my acrylic block has paint on it and I can't quite see through it, but I've got that not too bad. And I just stamp off and stamp off and all that will get used in collage at some point. This one I bought a while ago and haven't used it, again from Hobbycraft, and it's called Eucalyptus. And it's two kind of stalks together. I guess you could cut cut it down the middle, but I thought this would be quite good just to leave as is and to go right across the card. And I think this time I'm using one of the watercolour cards. I always do my first stamp onto paper, scrap paper, just to make sure that it is stamping correctly. And I'll stamp this up again, ink it up again, and then just stamp. I might, if I was doing that card again, mask off part of the second side of that last stamp so I didn't just get the little black bits along the edge. But that's just been a little bit pernickety. So I'm now going to take some black craft paint. I've got an old worn paintbrush there and you don't need to have a paintbrush like that but I'm just going to show you where I put the paint. What you want to do is to have a dry brush and just to be able to kind of spread it out in that kind of wispy way. And all I'm trying to do here is to give the effect of kind of grasses. So if you can imagine at the side of a field, for example, where the grasses are perhaps longer. Just trying to get that silhouette effect against the beautiful sunset. And just dragging the brush out, getting it that wispy way towards the top. Oh, got my coffee there when I got up to get another paintbrush. This is just a very thin brush. It came with the watercolour set, just pulling a little rogue hair out of it there. And I'm just loading that up with some black paint, but not too thick. And you'll see I just roll the brush and that's just to get it a little bit thinner to make those slightly longer lines, just to make it look like more kind of wildflowers, for example, or grasses, just those longer ones that you'll see. And all I'm going to take, do now is to take a bit more paint and again, with this type of brush, I'll always just roll it a little bit to try and get the hairs together. And I'm just going to do little dots so it looks like grasses or wildflowers. Not trying to make it look like anything in particular. It's really just creating a kind of effect of something that might be there. Now, it might be that in the area you stay, you have particular types of flowers. Maybe there's big cacti, for example, that would be wonderful to look out on. Or maybe you have buildings, you know. You could create a lovely scene with buildings against the backdrop of a beautiful sunset. The nature bit is the sunset, of course. So, 
this of course is a video for well it's a video for anybody that cares to watch it but it's part of our nature theme in the mixed media emporium that I co-host with Nina Rybina and I think next week will take us into June so we'll have a new prompt for the month of June so this will be my last video for this month on nature and I've made a playlist of my nature projects that I've done throughout May and I will put a link to that playlist above and below. So just finishing this card off with just a couple of little birds. Just two little strokes for each. So that really is a very easy way to create a back, uh, a kind of silhouette against the backdrop just in case you don't have any stamps. So here I'm looking at this stamp, it's just the way it stamps. There's little bits in the middle, you could fill that out with some black paint. But what I'm going to show you here is how you can even adjust a card that you've stamped on. And I'm going to do this in a couple of different ways, but with the same card. So just drawing a kind of horizon line there. And again, I'm just going to take my brush and make little stroke marks just to give the effect of grasses growing along there. Now, obviously, with this one, I've still got the sunset effect below. That could be left because that could be a field of corn glowing in the sunset. Or you could just start to fill it in a little bit, which just darkens it and it might look like a path. Or, as you'll see, as I do in a second, I fill it in completely and I just make that part of the, the full silhouette. I'll swap that brush out in a second for a bigger brush and then I'll get there a little bit quicker. So even with a basic stamp you can be adding to the design. And that to me gives quite a nice effect. Now this is something you could actually do in an art journal, you could do it on a piece of canvas. I'm just showing it on little cards simply because I can create a few of those whereas if it was a larger art journal page for example I'd maybe only be able to do one in a, a reasonable amount of time. So I've just taken some white craft paint, that same paint brush, and all I'm doing here is to add in a little bit of white here and there in the sky. And that just gives the effect of, you know, the clouds. Sometimes, you know, a sky isn't necessarily as flat toned as that. You still see bits of cloud in the sky and just those little wispy white bits do it here. You don't need to go overboard. You can just do a couple of little pieces or you can put much more in. And again at this stage you could go back in and add more of the base colours if you wanted to. So coming to the final stage here, because this is quite thin cardstock, I am actually going to back the cards. The ones with acrylic paint in particular get paint on the back and I think it's nice if you're sending these to somebody to actually have a as clean a background as possible. It's not essential, it's just one of the things I do. So I'm going to glue just a similar size piece of cardstock together and I'm just using a glue stick in this instance and I'll just push them. I'm making sure that the edges are as tight as possible. If I'd had a bone folder to hand I would have gone over that. I know my paint's dry, I know my ink's dry, so I'm just using the side of my hand just to push those in place. Sometimes if, like me, you don't cut things entirely accurate, you might get a little bit of a white line. You can trim that off if needs be. There I just rounded the corners and all I'm doing is taking the black stays on ink and going round the side. Now someone asked me the type of black pens I use. There they are, it's Unit Drawing Fine Line and they come in a variety of sizes. I will sometimes use a black Posca, I'll often use a white Posca 
I do like Posca's and you know I'm always trying out black and white pens to try and get the best. These ones work particularly well here. One piece of advice, and I know I've said this before, don't use them on acrylic paint that is still going to be wet because it just ruins them. So just doing a couple of different types of borders here. This one's on the gelatos, so there's a little bit of a resist to it. But I have previously done a video on borders and I'll link that above and below. Just putting a little bird in there because the, the stamp was off to the side. So here we have the final set. And actually you could make a nice little display wall with these if, if you made these and kept them for yourselves. So just showing you that I've added a few different borders. That one, because the stamp doesn't fill the whole thing and it kind of has a straight line, that just finishes off that particular one. This one didn't, to me, need a border, nor did this one, but they could be added in. Simple dot and dash with that one. It looks a bit like a stitch. Here's also a kind of stitched effect. This one I didn't bother. I do like that stamp. It's got a nice, simple, modern look to it. One of my favourite stamps ever is that one. I use it a lot. And this is my final one with a bit of a, a loopy border. So I will leave a link to the Facebook group below and a link to Nina's video this week. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you'll give these cards a try or do it in an art journal page. Here's some still images just to let you see the final thing. Thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. Bye for now.